finished your book and not sure what to do now? This week, I'll be sharing the next step so you can leap into your finished story. Stay tuned. Welcome to Leap Into Your Story podcast, where you discover your inner story, break down the process, and meet others who've done it so you can leap into your own story. We interview amazing guests who provide powerful insights that inspire you to get your story told. Be sure to visit our website at leapintoyourstory.com, and while you're there, subscribe and like us via your favorite social media network. Now sit back. Get ready to take some notes, and let's get started. This episode of Leap Into Your Story podcast is brought to you by Leap Into Your Story course. Visit leapintoyourstory.com where you have a guide to get your story told. I'm Victoria Anderson, and welcome to the Leap Into Your Story podcast where you discover your inner story work through the process, and get powerful insights that inspire you to get your own story told. So be sure to visit our website at leapintoyourstory.com. And while you're there, subscribe and like us via your favorite social media network. And this episode, we're providing you a brief overview of pros and cons of traditional publishing. This is from my Leap Into Your Story writing with ease online course. And if you like to take the leap into the full course, you can go to leapintoyourstory.thinkific.com. Or if you like to take a mini leap, you can try my free online writing course at leapintoyourstory.com forward slash gifts. Those links will be below in the comments section. Publishing. There are multiple ways you can publish your book. But in this podcast, I will be discussing the pros and cons of traditional publishing. So first, I want to take you through a list of important definitions that you need to know if you are considering the traditional route. And for those who aren't familiar with the traditional route of publishing, that means that you will seek out a publisher or a literary agent and submit your query letter, your synopsis, even part of your manuscript to have them consider them representing you in publishing your book. Now, starting off with the first definition, uh, which is going to be a literary agent. This is going to be somebody who's a professional who helps writers get their works published. And their duties generally include, you know, making sure your completed manuscript is ready to be submitted to publishers. They'll also work on finding you a publisher, usually targeting ones that maybe work in your niche or genre. And lastly, they're the business liaisons that will be the go-to between you as an author and a publishing company. And they do the legwork for pitching and negotiating for you with the publisher. Next is going to be something called a query letter. This is a, a letter of a quick overview usually maybe a few paragraphs to try to spark their interest in your book with either the publisher or if you're trying to land a literary agent. Now, the first paragraph is usually what your book is in a nutshell. The second paragraph is who will be your target audience. And lastly, the third paragraph is thanking them for their time for reviewing your manuscript and what you've submitted. So the next item that you need to be familiar with is a synopsis. Again, this is going to be a brief overview describing your book from start to finish. 
in no more than maybe one to two pages. Now, keep in mind, each needs to be very, very concise and very clear because you want to quickly grab their attention and entice them to take on your manuscript. And they usually don't commit more than a few minutes at a time skimming it. So that's real important that those are really top notch to get the job done. Now, let's look at a few of the traditional publisher pros. First, they will handle pretty much all the book design. Sometimes they, they'll further edit if they feel like they need to um, you know, refine it a little better for their particular professional standards. Or, and then of course they're going to print and do the promotion for most of the part. Things have changed a little bit with traditional publishers that they are now changing their expectation to have the author shoulder some of, some of these uh, steps. But for the most part, they will be handling the bulk of it. Next is being that they do publish and publishing is a business, your book is a commodity. They have historical data on demographics, certain genres, just longstanding history that they have built their publishing uh, business and reputation on these particular historical data that makes them basically, you know, pop, not only publish uh, popular publishers, but very um, productive and financially good. So that's, uh, that's something that say, if you self publish, you're not going to have all that historical data of having the publishing statistics, um, demographics, and, you know, connections that say a small potato publisher may, you, you know, not have. Lastly, certainly not the least, is external validation. Tell you, there is nothing greater than the feeling of having someone take a chance on your method, your message, your book, and investing it to getting published. So that um, in itself might be the number one reason, but consider the other two <laughs> as um, also as part of the pros. So let's review some of the cons of traditional publishing. First, it's gonna be less money. Traditional publishers uh, will be taking a big chunk of your sales because they take on more of the risk and put all their resources and into their uh, costs and overhead. So they wanna recoup that money as quickly as possible. So they do take a bigger chunk than say, self-publishing. Next is going to be less control. Traditional publishers have pretty much the say over what you can do and what you can't do with your own book. So I know there's been um, some authors I know who had very successful books and they wanted to get into say the audio uh, book market and spoke to their publisher to see if they can do that. The publisher said no. So keep that in mind. With a traditional publisher, you're going to have very little say over your book once you put it in their hands. Lastly, is a really long wait to get your manuscript published. Most publishers will take anywhere from six months to even years 
before you actually see your submitted manuscript printed and published. So keep these pros and, kind, pros and cons in mind. And now let's talk about where do you find publishers and literary agents. First, writing organizations and networks. So with this particular place, you can actually find both recommendations for publishers as well as literary agencies. And you have the opportunity to you know, check feedback and see what you like, what maybe a published author likes about that publisher and what doesn't like about that, or what do they like about say the literary agent they're working with or agents they've worked with. So I had times you probably can work um, with multiple ones. If you know, one isn't working out, you try other ones. Next is simply from books themselves. So if you are writing in a particular genre and there's a publisher that seems, seems to have that niche, check out that publisher. But I do want to just um, caution about that, a little, little caveat of caution, because some self-publishers do publish under a name, so they may not take on other people's work. So you do want to do your research to make sure they, they are a publisher and not a self-publisher working under a name. The other kind of warning caveat is just be careful with vanity presses. So vanity presses tend to take your money and just put your manuscript into print. So I will go more into vanity presses in my next podcast when I go over the pros and cons of self-publishing. But long story short, you want to do research and make sure that you are soliciting a publisher that has a longstanding good reputation, um, who's been around, um, you know, check out those reviews to make sure they're treating authors respectfully and not crooked. And, you know, they're paying you a fair price for your work. Then lastly will be guidebooks. Um, these are usually printed and updated yearly with lists of publishing companies, literary agents. And a lot of times they'll not only include lists and references, but even tips on how to write a really good query letter or synopsis that you can use as maybe a template. So think about what you, how you want to publish your book, and I'll meet you here again to share more steps so you can leap into your finished book. So thank you for tuning into the Leap Into Your Story podcast, where you discover your inner story, work through the process, and get inspired so you can write your own story. So remember to visit our website at leapintoyourstory.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're there, subscribe and like us via your favorite social media network. We are looking forward to seeing you next time here on the Leap Into Your Story podcast. Thank you for tuning into the Leap Into Your Story podcast where you discover your inner story, break down the process, and meet others who've done it so you can leap into your own story. Remember to visit our website at leapintoyourstory.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're there, subscribe and like to us via your favorite social media network. We're looking forward to seeing you next time on the Leap Into Your Story podcast.